With everything that's happened in the United States over the last couple of weeks, the mainstream media has been able to sideline a lot of the other big geopolitical issues that are bringing our world closer and closer to the brink of destruction. Yes, unfortunately, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, they have been dominating global headlines, really at the expense of coverage to these other big ticket problems that really do matter. But unfortunately, today, we've had two events that have brought Israel's brutal attack on Gaza firmly back into the spotlight. We've had an attack on a school in Gaza and also an attack on a soccer field in the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights, which all together should allow us to start asking the question, who is really benefiting from all of this global conflict? Because it's certainly not most people. In my view, in my analysis, it's only the military industrial complex. I'm Stuart Hooper, an independent geopolitical analyst. Be sure to follow me on whatever platform you're watching this on. I have more degrees than a thermometer in the study of politics, and I try to approach these issues not from the left or from the right, but from a critical perspective that cuts through all of that and gets to who's really in charge, who's really benefiting, and what could we do to maybe change our world for the better. Because the headlines we're going to look at here this is certainly not doing anything to change our world for the better. So we will start in Gaza. Horrifying Israeli strike on girls' school in Gaza kills at least 30. And I grabbed this article, I want to say, maybe five hours ago at this point, five, six hours ago. So it's likely that death toll has probably gone up. Khadija Girls School had a field hospital within the complex and was sheltering over 4,000 displaced Palestinians. I am so lucky to have survived. Fadel Keshko, a 22-year-old man who was staying in the school with his sick grandmother and nephew, told Middle East Eye, The building I took shelter in was directly targeted. The distance between me and the rocket was just a meter away. I am horrified and terrified. Keshko and his relatives have since fled to Khan Yunis, where the Israeli army is currently attacking areas previously designated as humanitarian zones. And I'm not sure if this article gets into it. Oh yeah, here it does. Here's the line, um, which is the line that the Israelis just trot out at will whenever they're caught red-handed, brutally murdering innocent people. The Israeli army said it had hit a Hamas, quote, command and control center embedded in the school. Now, here's the problem with this. We in the West, we hear that term command and control center and people's minds immediately spring to Hollywood movies, underground bunkers, James Bond style evil genius headquarters. But in reality, if this was anything like that, it was probably one guy who Israel somehow thinks is connected to Hamas through some strange web of connections, which may or may not add up to reality. And it certainly wasn't a command and control center. It certainly wasn't some super villain base. It was probably a guy with a walkie talkie talking to someone God only knows where. Hamas is not a unified military. It doesn't have ranks of command and hierarchy. It's a paramilitary force. It's a ragtag militia. It, at this point, is going to have practically no organization whatsoever. Um, This is just an absolute excuse for unmitigated bloodshed, unmitigated slaughter. And I think the fact that we see school after school, hospital after hospital, continually destroyed... I think the better term for explaining what's going on here is not actually genocide, but ethnic cleansing. Because if you're directly destroying the children of an area, of a population, of a racial group, what are you doing? You're annihilating the next upcoming generation. That is ethnic cleansing. Um, So this is a continuing example 
of the hellish situation in Gaza. But as I mentioned, um, dead children have been making headlines in multiple places today. Children and teenagers among 12 dead in Golan Heights rocket attack that Israel blames on Hezbollah in a major escalation. Yeah, not great. At least 12 people, including children, were killed when multiple rockets hit a village in the Golan Heights Saturday in an attack described by Israel as the deadliest against it since October the 7th. In other words, Netanyahu is still failing to protect the people of Israel. Israel said it had identified approximately 30 projectiles crossing from Lebanon into Israeli territory and blamed the Iran-backed Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. The incident has raised fears of a major escalation in the long-running conflict along the Israel-Lebanon border, with some Israeli politicians demanding retaliation, even though Hezbollah says it firmly denies firing the rockets. Now, just for the uninitiated here, this paragraph is also useful. Some 20,000 Druze Arabs live in the Golan Heights, an area Israel seized from Syria in 1967 during the Six-Day War and annexed in 1981. Considered occupied territory under international law and UN Security Council resolutions, the area is home to about 50,000 Israeli Jewish settlers and Druze. Most Druze there identify as Syrian and have rejected offers of Israeli citizenship. So this is an occupied territory. These settlements, these Israeli settlers have consistently been deemed as in violation of multiple aspects of international law, but continually supported by the Israeli government and Netanyahu. Um, and who is responsible for this? Well, I'm not sure we're really going to know. Um, at least not immediately. The issue here is dead children. How many children need to die on either side of this conflict for either of the parties involved to say, you know what, maybe this isn't working. Maybe we should pursue literally any other policy option that doesn't involve killing children. Is anyone going to say that? Anyone on either side? Because again, my position on this from October 7th is that, that that was a terror attack. Israel had a right to respond. It should never have happened. But what Israel has done was not a response in the sense of self-defense. It's been an all-out bloodbath, a complete offensive against the Palestinian people. And you've had these attacks repeatedly on the Arab side from Hezbollah, from the Houthis in Yemen, from Iran. Iranians are not Arabs, of course. I just... It makes you wonder. It really makes you wonder what's going on here. But again, in my analysis, it's the uh, military industrial complex, the institutional forces that quite literally benefit from the continuation of global conflict. As long as you have an institutional force that benefits politically, economically, militarily, socially, from violence in the world, you're going to continue to have disaster after disaster after disaster just like this. Maybe we can end on good news. I'm not sure. You tell me. UK drops plans to challenge ICC arrest warrant request against Benjamin Netanyahu. British Prime Minister Keir Starmer's office said Friday that the UK will not intervene in the International Criminal Court's request for an arrest warrant against Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The announcement of a, is a reversal 
of plans announced by former Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who was ousted earlier this month. Now that happened a day before this and this. It's almost like the British government saw the writing on the wall, knew that this conflict was going to continue to spiral out of control, that the Israeli government and Netanyahu were going to continue to be responsible for outrage after outrage after outrage. And here we are. Leave me your comments on this below. Would love to hear what you have to say. I'm not sure I have much more else to say on this. Um, follow me if you're new, wherever you're watching this, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Share the video everywhere you possibly can. Hit like, and I'll be back with more soon, because guess what? We had another potential escalation sending us down the path of World War Three just yesterday as well. So I'll be talking about that tomorrow. It's a wonderful time to be alive.